Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been five weeks at least since I've made a video and this one's going to be quite difficult. So what I did is I had to fly in a special guest to join me in this video because he's a bit of the expert. So welcome, Ross Goodall. Uh, it is a bit of a joke. We didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually fly him in just for that. <laughs> but uh, he is definitely more of the expert when it comes to this band XTC. Um, I've known about XTC for quite some time, but I have never really get, been into their music as near as seriously as, as I have been for the past. I don't know, six months, I guess. Um, and it's pretty much thanks to Ross who really got me back into XTC and got me. Um, listening to their music again and I've picked up quite a lot of their uh, albums and singles and stuff so we're gonna go through my entire collection unfortunately Ross's collection is back in Scotland so <laughs> he won't be able yeah. to uh, talk about it too much but do you want to say anything quick uh, yeah just sort of like um, I've been like into sort of like XTC for about eight months now so not like the longest time I just sort of like discovered them um, fairly like fairly re like recently so like i've been like sort of like collecting like their like records like for like a few months now like along like with james who's sort of been like discovering like them together so we just thought that for a, um, another video um like we would um go over james's collection yes yes so i guess expert might be a bit of a uh a stretch yeah, yeah a bit of a stretch I... there it's not, not not quite the expert but neither one of us are experts so uh -huh. go easy on us on the comments if we don't get everything just right because we are mm. still kind of exploring and learning yes, about this band quite but new to them, yeah, relatively. i have learned in the past week that ross has been here that he has is quite the uh, encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to music because he has amazing retention when it comes to lyrics and information and he's constantly reading and I'm more of just put it on and listen to it kind of guy. I don't really get into it like with all the details as much as him. So definitely is good to have someone like that around because we've spent a lot of time the past week talking about XTC. So mm -hmm. I guess it all started back in what year is this album So it here? came out about 1978. They got a record contract. This was the first record they put out as XTC um, called White Music. Yes, white music, and this came out what year? 1978. So they've been around like a few years um, as a group called the Helium Kids, and like and like sort of like they kind of like got like a record contract, like sort of like on like the back of like um like on the back of like the punk explosion. Um, like I think a Partridge said that I like, get. I think like Partridge, like I said that like anyone like basically got signed again like, in like, 1978. So this is like the first record here. A little bit patchy, I think. There's yeah. some there's some all right tunes on it. But yeah, certainly like very sort of different from yes. like their like um like from like the later records. It's just a nice original on Virgin Records. It's actually, Canadian press it says there. Yes. I've kept some notes because a lot of the stuff I have to admit came from the internet, and one from one particular seller in, in, that has yes. been kind of liquidating his XTC collection. So I've been able to pick up quite a lot of it. Uh, from the same seller, so I kept the notes that he left mm -hmm. in there. But um, a any favorite track on that one? That one probably Statue of Liberty would Statue be my favorite. Liberty, yeah, yeah, but maybe not the greatest place to start for someone. No, no, yeah. Um, but, so yeah, from there, they put out Go To, which came out the same year actually. So that one came out like at the start of '78. This one towards the end. And if I'm being honest, they probably rushed it a little bit too much. Like a lot of bands like, around this time, like the Jam, like did it probably like Blondie, like as well. So like rushed out, sort of like a second album, mm -hmm. like without really like having like the like material like there. So this one, like, there's not really like any really standout tracks like on it. It's 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 it's, it's quite it's quite patchy. I would it's say. quite short, isn't it? Yeah, pretty sure. And also the the keyboardist like on the back. This copy comes with a really nice insert as well, um, and the sort of map of Swindon like on the back, like where like the town in England or where they are from. The keyboardist like in the group, a um, guy Barry Andrews, kind of um, was writing like a lot of songs like for this record. Like there's at least two of his tracks like audio, which they're hardly like the greatest songs mm -hmm. like ever. Like so, it is a bit a bit of a um, dodgy album. This and, audio. And, and Barry Andrews hung around for. He was only on this record and the debut album White Music, so he um, was. I'm not sure like if like he left like all like was fired, um, but like he certainly like was out of the picture by the next album. Yes. 
And this happens to be a pressing from New Zealand, so if there's anybody from New Zealand watching, there you go. All right, well then we get into the good stuff. Yes, so. this is where XTC kind of really sort of like, um, mm -hmm. like sort of like found like themselves really. So I've got sort of two copies of Drums of Wise. So this is uh, James's copy here, which I think is a, a, a UK pressing actually, because there's a few different versions of this. Like some out, um, like someone's came with like the song Making Plans for Nigel on it, which is probably like their like most most well known song. Mm -hmm. Like whoever I believe like the American one like doesn't have that, but like James's copy does. So that's that one. But I um, recently bought like online for like the same seller yes. as you. I got um, this copy here, which is quite a nice one. It's a um, it's a promo one as well. You see there, and this is a Australian one. So this has both Making Plans for Nigel and 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 um, Life Begins at the Hop by like the song I'm which replaces. So it's quite a unique track list of this one here. Yeah, I, I guess I see them both side by side. They are quite different, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Right. So this is um, yeah a nice white label. Like actually like my first like white label promo album, which is quite neat. And then you get again a nice insert with it as well. So yeah, this is a brilliant record. Yes. And ironically enough, we uh, he was having a very difficult time mm -hmm. finding this record. Aye. That's why he waited till he came here to get it from the seller. I've been buying a lot of my stuff from. But I think it was the second record store we went to in Houston. Houston yeah. They had an American copy of it mm -hmm. in pretty pristine condition. It was pretty nice. So right? I think we both kind of regret maybe not getting that. But yeah. But it's one which it. I had a very very hard time finding because like I, because I've like never seen one like out in like the wilds like in like Britain. So yeah. Was, I, and for some reason that album is maybe just a bit more common here. Maybe like, yeah. Uh, I've seen we've seen two of them since uh, we've been traveling oh, together. Uh -huh. So from there we go to, uh, I think, one of our personal favourites. Yes, here. yes, and there's quite a special copy to show it, is the album Black Sea here. Could be my favourite XTC record here, and James just the other day picked up a very special copy. Um, this one here, which is a lovely sealed copy, which is quite quite interesting. This one here, like, a, like in like, the original like green bag as well. Well, first of all, I didn't even know it came originally mm -hmm. in a green bag until uh, I'm going to show you something later that kind of tipped me off to that. But I don't think either one of us knew until recently that they, right. these came in an original green bag. And it'd be interesting if someone knows in the comments why that was. Yeah. Because neither one of us happened to know. No idea. It's not like this is a bad album cover. It's yeah. a very good album uh -huh. cover. But maybe the label said something like, you know, it doesn't say anywhere that it's XTC. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, they said, okay, well, we'll fix that problem. <laughs> Um, That's not my guess, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, some brute tracks here, Gemmels and Majors is on here. Like, really, like, Colin Moulding was kind of, like, sort of, like, um, becoming, like, a really great like, songwriter, like, around this time. So we had, like, um, like the lead-off single, like, from this album. But there's other great ones, like, Respectable Street and, um, like, Sergeant Rock's Gonna Help Me. So, yeah, it's mm. a very, very strong, al strong album there. Yeah, probably, I'm planning probably to keep that one sealed. Because mm. this, this is a pretty good playing copy. So yeah. that one probably will stay sealed. Uh -huh. So from there we've got a little EP. So then we move on to this EP, which I'm not 100% sure like, about like, the history check of this one. It's, it's a Canadian EP called uh, Five Senses, and like I think it came out in 1981. So like although like one like those popular songs like is Senses Working Overtime, it isn't actually like on like this EP. And um, it's got five songs there, like all of which I think are non-album tracks. So yeah, quite a unique item this one here. But like I'm not, I've, 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 I've like, I don't know like any like of these songs like on like on there just on this nice version label there. Yeah, we'll have to play that one later. Mm -hmm. Another ca Canadian. Yes. And then we go on to... Let's just go ahead and go right yeah, to it. Go this is English Settlement nice. here. Brilliant, brilliant album. Again, like I said, that with Drums of Wires could be my favourite of theirs. I think yeah. it's just a lot more sort of variety like of sound on here like it's a double record as well this is a really nice box set what came out like a few years back like james is like lucky james is like lucky enough to have one it's a really really nice box just got it really, like yeah. literally like two weeks ago right so i haven't even played it fantastic stuff there but i have played the played this copy of it mm -hmm. this so one was actually one of the very first uh, copies of any xtc album i bought on vinyl other than one coming up in a little bit and I bought it off of Discogs, and apparently the seller didn't realize it's kind of special. Yeah. We're also going to flip it over here so and here show it you. It's a signed copy, signed by all um, all three members. So you've got Andy Partridge there, uh, Colin Mulder's signature, and then I believe Dave Gregory, it looks like, for that one there. So yeah, it's really fascinating. It's just dumb one. luck. I had no intention of getting a signed mm -hmm. copy, didn't know it was signed. I don't think the seller knew it was signed. Mm -hmm. I did post this in the Vinyl Community Facebook page, and 
quite a few people chimed in and said those signatures look absolutely authentic. Yeah. So and it's just like how like the person who had this like managed to get the signatures because it was around this time like they stopped touring like as well, so they've like, done very little like promotional like, appearances for this record, mm -hmm. like just like how like they managed to actually get access like to like the members like of like XCT to get them to sign this. So just my really, guess really is they were probably signed much after the fact. Yeah. You know? Maybe, uh, yeah, but even like I said, like they stopped, like they stopped touring though by that point, so they really, yeah, they really know how um, they could get all three like that, exactly. So it's uh, great to have it, and it's I feel kind of spoiled in a way to have it because yeah. I probably other people more worthy than me, mm -hmm. but um, go ahead. And they've got another, and um, this is a 12 inch single, like from that album Ball and Chain, really great song, like another Colin Moulding track, probably the B side though, like is like one of my favorite ones there, and um, like Heaven is Paved with Broken Glass, really, yes, that very song. nice song. So yeah, that's that one. And we've got a couple copies of this one. I yeah. guess we can both hold it up. <laughs> give that as well. Hi, Mama. Mama. Yeah. So this was the first XTC record I owned on vinyl since uh, I got back into vinyl, and um, probably the album I'm more most familiar with, mm -hmm. and maybe the one that it gets respected the most in America, at least, yeah. uh, for some reason. I mean, they have a mobile fidelity pressing of this mm -hmm. on on CD anyway. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I always thought like it's quite like an underrated like record. Like there's something like it's not one like which you hear like, which like you hear like a lot of people like saying like great things about. And um, like it's usually like English set on its scale or getting on such. Whereas this one like kind of gets like lost a bit. But I think it again, like I said, like with like uh, Black Sea and English Show, like, mm -hmm. could well be like my favorite of theirs. Yes, it's a really good album. This, this is the first one I have. This is a much more mm -hmm. recent. Yeah, and actually in shrink crap both, as well. Both of these yeah. are in shrink, so very fortunate. Mm -hmm. And it came. This album uh, pertains or ha uh, contains one of the my favorite singles that they ever put out. He's going to show you. Next. Yes, uh, love on a farm boy's wages here. Really, really nice single. Oh, yep, we just heard it again yesterday. Just mm -hmm. love that song. And that I picked up in Colorado while I was on vacation just this past yeah, June. Interesting find there. Yes. yes. So quite lucky to get that. So we got another single from that album. Another single from that album, Great Fire. And I'm led to believe that this one is quite rare because when it came out, done absolutely nothing that chart wise. Like, it was a huge flop. Um like so I've never seen this single before, like apart from like James's copy here. Um so yeah, really interesting. Well interesting you guys item. know me when I like something I kinda do tend to go overboard and fall <laughs> out. So when I see uh -huh. something I, I I just pick it up. Um, next album is, next is one, yeah. personal favourite again, I think. Uh, Big Express here. This was maybe a bit like overproduced slightly, like it's like one which is, is kind of very different like from Mama and like English album, both of which were very sort of like acoustic sort of driven like records, mm -hmm. like sort of. But this one is a lot more contemporary, like 80s sound to it, and it is a little bit like messy, like the production on it. But I do really love like the vinyl design of this, like the insert, I think it's like really nice if you just like get it out. Sort of like the sort of train nice. theme going on, so yeah, it is like a really strong like, record. This, but production wise, it may be a tad like yeah, overbearing in like, places. I mean, you, you're, Russ tends to be maybe a little bit more critical as far as mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, subjective, I guess you could say. Where you know, I guess I just tend to maybe focus on the good, but um. Yeah, another New Zealand pressing, and I think I have one or two singles from this album too. Uh, oh yes, we do, of course. And um, we've got um, this one here, which is "This World Over." Song I really like again, a really like underrated track. Like all like XCC singles, like a really like underrated, like generally speaking. So that's that on there, and um, "This World Over." And then I think this was like the leader single. I think this charted like in Britain, but about number sixty or something really <laughs> pathetic like that. And um, um, "All You Pretty Girls," another really good track here. Yes. Another lovely, lovely condition, like twelve inch. Single James has got. Like, I'm quite jealous of these ones here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm worried when I leave the house, all my XTC stuff's gonna go with him. <laughs> Hard to search him before he leaves. Mm -hmm. So after Big Express, like XC decide that they want to sort of um, do something very different. Like they form like this fictitious band called the Dukes of Stratosphere now, and like they make like this record here. Uh, it's called Twenty Five O'clock. Unfortunately, like neither offers like has like a van or copy of it. But apparently, like, this was actually quite successful. Like I've read somewhere that it, that this actually sold more copies than the Big Express and Mama did. Yeah. Like it was like there was quite a lot. Like there was quite a, there was quite like a lot of like interest like around this because like, it was sort of like it was released again like the fashion like off like a like sort of like um 
like lost like unreleased record like from the 60s like it wasn't credited like to XCC like at all because only a few years after it came out I think people realized that it was like XCC so really really good stuff here. like a little bit like sort of like uh, cheesy sort of like it is very sort of like D deliberately sort of 60s mm -hmm. like sort of psychedelic sound on it but like I quite like it yeah, though it's good it's a yeah. good listen uh, so that was that came out in 1985 I believe um, 25 o'clock it's yes. called and isn't there an interesting story about the producer of that and who they uh, ended up with going on to you, produce yes uh, producer was a guy called John Lecky who also I believe done the debut record White Music like he was back with them like on like that Duke Strasbourg and like apparently I found that like, Stone Roses like really liked that like, because Really, really like the Dukes of Shakespeare stuff. So, like he like produced like their like legendary, um, legendary self-titled album, yes. one of the best of all time. Yeah. There, so yeah, I didn't know that until he arrived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so then we move on to Skylocking here. Yes. Um, James has got a few copies of it. This is a sort of really nice original, um, like US pressing of it here. Um, so the story like, behind this one was um, like the record label Virgin like were Virgin like were like, apparently like getting like quite like restless like they wanted like a hit album like from XCC like otherwise like they were like at risk like of like getting dropped like from like the label like so like the condition was like it had to be produced by a like American so like um, so like a list was sort of like drawn up like of like American producers and like Todd Rungeron like was like selected like sort of like famous sort of singer songwriter yeah. so, like from like the seventies. However, sessions were very fraught for this record. Like apparently like Andy Partridge and like Todd Rungeron really like didn't get along like too well. But it was a successful record though for them. Like probably like the biggest hit album like, in like America. I like so. I would say like certain so. like certainly like amongst the, like indie like sort of circles and that like it was mm -hmm. like was quite successful here. See, nice to get a sleeve of James's copy here, um, and there was a um, quite interesting story like behind like one of the singles from it. So it's got the original one, a nice box set, uh, similar sort of package to like to the English settlement one. Like I'm like again, like lucky enough to have this one thanks to James, and um, and then one of the singles from it was the song Grass here, which is a quite pleasant like Colin Mulden track. But track, but like the American radio stations decided like to flip like this one over, um, and like play a song called "Dear God," which was never originally like on Skylock, and like whoever like that song like caused like a lot of controversy. Became probably like the most well known like American song, mm -hmm. um, song like and that like, was issued like as as like a single like in like its own right a few years later. So quite like an interesting like, story there um, behind uh, Skylocking. I guess it's a testimony that any publicity, good or bad, is is sometimes. Good. And successful, yeah, and, and get some and, notice. And I had misspoke earlier when I mentioned those mobile fidelity CDs, which mm -hmm. we forgot to pull out. There's like there's two of them. There's uh, and this is one of them, not Mummer. So uh, um, I, I believe this is probably. I agree with you that this is probably one of their more successful, more successful, albums. like most like loved records. However, I personally think it is a little bit like overrated. Like I think that like, they did make like yeah. better ones and um, better ones, but it's certainly like a very good like album though, like nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. And we go back so to then we this. go back to the Dukes of Stratosphere that like they put out a full length album in 1987 I believe um, called Sonic Sunspot like and on this one like they've cut, like sort of like made like no secret like about like, their like identity that is um, sort of I believe that like, the picture is like is like off like XTC like on like the inside there like they're showing their faces like for like this one here mm -hmm. um, and they, and like this is like a good record here like a uh, song like Vanishing Girls fantastic like You're My Drug like, so, like there's some other like, good ones on here like some sort of like, like sort of like quirky songs which probably like would have been a bit like out of place like on out of place like on like a XCC record but on this on this album though they fit like right in like, yeah. with like what the Jukes of Shouts feel like we're like trying Definitely. to do and uh, quite difficult to find and this is mm -hmm. a Spanish copy. Italian copy. Italian think, copy. Yeah. Yes, and uh, again came from that cellar. Uh -huh. Small uh, job not quite either. So. Yeah, never seen it in the wild mm -hmm. other than I think probably C D. Yeah. Because it is like a Juice of Stratosphere C D like what you can get which has that and the twenty five o'clock um, thing on it um, mm -hmm. um, which is certainly like mm -hmm. seems like worth having. Yeah. So after Dukes of Stratosphere they put out I'm gonna just get it from down here. <laughs> big pile like of XCC just growing around me oh, here yes. so we've got um, this album here um, Oranges and Lemons this is like my copy like which I bought like from like the same seller like which James got and like again another uh, promo copy which is quite interesting we just listened to this record yeah, and like I like, really liked it um, like, uh, like I think it, I think it's like a solid album like again like not like their best one really but 
Yeah, it's all about mm-hmm. subjective. And it, it, one of the nice things I just was kind of making a mental note when we were playing it is it's got great variety on it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I guess that's kind of you know normal for a double album. You're going to yeah. get a lot of different sounds. Yeah, but this one specifically, I yeah, really good. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I have a shrink wrap copy. Yeah, of James got well. a um, really nice condition one here off it. And also, I believe um, all the twelve-inch singles what were issued as well. Do you mm-hmm. want to take yeah, that I'll one there? Yeah, just put this on this part. Yeah. yeah. So we've got um, the Murder Simple, so which was the first single. Like again, like I'm sure this song was a bit of a minor hit, like in like America, like as well. Um, Russia yeah, hit. I didn't look up Russia the chart positions, you know, it for, all, but for the lack of time, but. Um, you know, I don't think they ever really had any, you know, top ten singles yeah. in America, but this might be one that at least charted like yeah. top forty. I think, I think so, maybe like uh, maybe because they've got like really good like, music video about it. Some books so there. One of my favorite XTC singles, and mm-hmm. I love the cover of that. It's just very, very sharp. Uh-huh. And then that, and then that was followed up by Colin Moulding's King for the Day, which is probably my favorite yeah. like, on like the album. Just really like it's just got such a sort of like great sort of like eighties feel, very tis for fizzy like this mm-hmm. track I think. And like again, um, I think it probably charted like in like, the UK, but probably about number eighty or something. Just really, really like <laughs> dynamite like, shot position because it's such a brilliant, brilliant song. Like King for a Day, and then another one which came out was The Loving Here, which isn't one of my favourites. Like I probably like I probably like wouldn't like have picked this like for like a single, but it's still like not a bad song there though. Again, from the um, Oranges and Lemons album. Yes. Well, the, from there we go to the ever elusive album that uh, <laughs> I can't seem to find anywhere, and the cheapest copy I can find is about one hundred and fifty dollars, and they're from around the world and I'm just not going to pay that kind of money yeah, so we're going to show you a cassette version of non such yeah. but he lucky him has a <laughs> yeah, copy of, of it like, I kind of wish that like, I brought it like with me so that I could show it like, in, like, in, like so that I could show it like in like, this video like, so we had a complete like albums collection like on like vinyl but like unfortunately like I like um, like right. overlooked that, but yeah, like non such another great great record from them. Another very long one, like as long. well. Like they put like it's got a good like twenty tracks on this, like as well as like oranges and lemons. Like they all like quite yeah. They are like packed full albums, like but all a very very little filler like on them, like as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, non such another another really really great record. Favorites on here, uh, My Bird performs. Um, the disappointed, um, then she appeared. Um, what's the other one? Wrapped in grey. There's yeah. a lot, lot of great stuff on there. So from there, we're going to um, move on. To, that was the end of their tenure with Geffen, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know if you know any of the history about you know. This is their own label, I believe, right? I this think so. Yes, I think they started their own record label in like the mid nineties. Now we're at. Yep, and there's they did two albums and there's mm-hmm. a bit of a story behind it so a bit of like a trilogy over. for this yeah. one here is, is, is called like Apple Venus so it made like this this was the first one here um, Apple Venus Volume 1 here this is a very um, very different record very sort of classical sort of sound to it very like acoustic like acoustic. very sort of, yep. p- sort of pure, pure sound to it like yeah like a really great record here this one and then like, I believe like at like, the same time they issued like sort of companion album sort of like the demos which just is which is it like you almost like can't tell the difference here. Yeah, it's quite difficult. Yeah. But this is really good. Like Very I good. like I like hadn't heard this like, until like the other day, but I thought it was as good like as like, the album versions of like, some of the songs. Even better. Yeah, I like I would like agree there. Yeah. So yeah, and um, this is worth having and James again is lucky enough to have the homespun, like the demos like on vinyl as yeah. well, which is a Reci- little bit a recent purchase. Like, yeah, this one. And it was a mistake purchase to be <laughs> honest with you, because I thought I was buying the actual studio album. And being as, you know, somebody new to this and unfamiliar, it yeah. turned out it was the Demos uh-huh. album. But I don't regret it, really, frankly, mm-hmm. because um, it is very, very enjoyable. Yeah. I quite like it. Definitely, I like, really, like, really like worth having this one here. Definitely. And, and uh, then, so they fold that up. So that came out about 1998, oh, I think. Oh, and it has my very, uh, one of my very favorite uh, XTC songs on it. Uh, I like that. Yeah, that that was also like in my top ten when I made yeah. that um, a good few months back. So they followed that up with um, in 2000 with their last record today and probably their last record like which like they'll ever do like I can't see them like getting back together by this point as well as well like it's worth noting that they were down to like a duo like off like Andy Partridge and Colin Mill and Dave Gregory left I think just after none such yeah. um, not such although I think he is credited to something like yeah, on like Apple Vidas yeah, a couple of things. so the album in question is um, Wasp Wasp Star here. Which I really, really, really love. Like, yeah. like, yeah, like you said, that could be your favorite like XTC album. 
it's just ironic, you know. How many bands mm-hmm. can you think of that they got better throughout better their career? Better guys like went on. Probably like the Beatles would probably be like the only it. like one. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, so unusual because mm-hmm. usually the quality kind of deteriorates over Aye. time. And in XTC's case, it just seemed like they, they actually got were better just getting better. into their prime, and then they kind of stopped. But this so album is remarkable. Yeah. And then similarly, like with Apple Videos, they've got like, sort of the homespun demos for here. So that's really, really nice, this one here. And then to add to that, James is lucky enough to have a original yes. vinyl pressing off, off, like off Wastor, which I'm quite jealous of, like <laughs> once again. Uh, but luckily enough though, um, these two records along with Skylarkin are being reissued yes. like on vinyl like in um, September. Yes. I think they're coming out quite soon. So people like me like you like can't afford it like are like lucky enough to like get like vinyl copies like at last. Like, off these two brilliant records which again like I say could could well be like their best work. Like yeah. although like they're not like as well known, like well loved, they certainly are um, like very worthwhile albums to have. It's quite ironic, really, I mean, because, you know, I've really only been into XTC probably for about six to eight months as Mm -hmm. far as, you know, I dabbled, I had a few things, but I never really played it very often. But now that I have this kind of large collection, it's these two albums, those last two albums that I tend to play the most. And they're both very different as well. Yeah, very different, but there's just something that really resonates with Mm -hmm. me with these last two. Yeah. So I'm very anxious to get the reissue of uh, Apple's Venus in particular, and I'm, you know, probably save that and not play it very often with my Wasp Star. So Uh, to kind of summarize everything, there's this uh, kind of makeshift uh, Frankenstein uh, Japanese box set, and you think, where on earth did you get that? Well, you can't just go out and buy this. I mean, the contents inside you certainly can, but this uh, was uh, homemade from somebody in China. He happens to do these. I have three different versions of kind of complete Japanese mini LP box set CDs. I've got a Japan one, I've got a Dead Can Dance one, and now I've got an XTC one. And it is obviously just the Skylarking cover, but on the back side it does list all of the albums that go inside the box instead of the track listing, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And then I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'll just flip through these very, very quickly for the sake of time because you've just seen them all. Uh, Japanese mini LPs with the OB strip are all incredible sounding. And these are replicated down to a T, like the vinyl packaging, like originally, because uh, there's some things like I didn't know, like say Black Sea, that like, came with like a lyric insert. Yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I like, never like knew that. So these are really, really nice. And this is how I, I did, wouldn't have even known that it came with the green cover like this on on the big, uh, yeah, the Black Sea mm-hmm. album because, you know, like like Russ just said, these are exact replicas. Even down to the embossment on the all texture, the texture oh, with nice. the embossment, yeah. and just really high quality, um, you know. And I thought, well, you know, even this, you know, I'm assuming yeah. that a very original pressings of this were done in kind of a, a circular. So, yeah, they were. Uh, I've, I've never seen one never seen one before ever, never. other than this Japanese mini LP. Um, so, you know, I kind of so far have tended to play these because one that they're easy and two I don't want to muck up my vinyl but and these um, sound great these you can't, really you do can't sound be the quality on them at one point I'll have to do a complete collections video of uh, my Japanese mini LPs I've done my mobile fidelity ones but uh, these are really incredible and the real expert on this is uh, Robert Z Bobby Z's channel if you really want to know more about Japanese mini LPs uh, he is the uh, the maestro, the, the the guy with all of the information and how wonderful they are. Mm-hmm. So um, one, I, I had to show that off though, kind of a Frankenstein make make made up box yeah. set but uh, and it certainly all, looks official oh, doesn't it yeah and they all band that probably do need like a sort of box set like you need you need, like vinyl like all like cd like they've just like they've not got one and like yeah I mean, like i mean that's like as good as like, you can get like without like anything like official so i mean like, how great would it be if they did a vinyl box set yeah. just like this maybe it's to change the cover ever so slightly so mm-hmm. it represented all the albums, yeah, the albums but if it slid out the same way oh, yeah. you know i had a picture of the guys you know, I would say they could make a fortune doing exactly something like that. So anyway, um, a couple miscellaneous miscellaneous things. items. I have a few things here which, like, which I really don't know too much about. First one is um, what he's got called a uh, rag and bone buffet here, which I believe just like looking like at the chat list is just sort of B sides mm-hmm. um, and maybe some sort of demos and stuff. Uh, so there's a chat list in there. I believe this is also available on CD. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the vinyl though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, an interesting little compilation there. I've seen that on vinyl anywhere. 
And this is one which James has sealed. It's called A Testimonial Dinner, which I believe is a um, sort of con um, um, concept, uh, a tribute album yes. to XTC, like various like artists like covering like, their songs, most of which I haven't heard of. No, <laughs> I don't even know if I've heard of so, any of these. So yeah, albums, like, although, to be honest with you. Although I believe one of the artists is actually just like Andy Partridge, like in disguise. Like oh, he's, like, really? he's just like credited it's like he's like he's named himself like something yeah. else to cover like one of his own songs and I can't see anything so I have to use my little mic yeah. magnifying glass here uh, well the verb pipe we've heard of them right crash test dummies the verb oh, I might just think I got the verb well the, I showed you the verb pipe album oh, the, the other day oh verb pipe okay yeah uh, boy I can't even read this even with this mm -hmm. well anyway oh they might mm -hmm. be giants I'm just trying to name a few of these that you guys might know um well, those are the ones I recognize. Joe Jackson, have quite a few albums from him. Sarah McLaughlin does Dear God, so that might be interesting. So I'll probably will unseal this and play it. And there's a few other miscellaneous bits and bobs from Andy Partridge solo. He made this record, I believe in 1981, I think it came out, um, credited to Mr. Partridge. And I've got no idea what it's like. I hear it's not awfully brilliant. Um, yeah. Have you heard it? I haven't heard it yet. No, so we'll see what that's all about. Um, like, Strange um, cover. I mean, it almost looks comes. like it was hand scribbled. You know, if you look carefully, it looks like someone just took a marker pen and just scribbled out some mm -hmm. of these people swimming. Yeah. Um, but it's strange, um, and it's right. paper thin, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. We'll see. And then he's also put out quite a few of these CDs, like Fuzzy Warbles. I believe it's just like demos and stuff. But, like we listened to it like last it's night, and like comical it's, in it's, a way. it's it's quite it's quite it's quite weird in places. But there's some there's some really good solid demos. I like, got yes. it. It's just a real sort of mishmash of stuff. And I believe like there's a whole series of them. It's about six of them. Like what like you can get. Yeah. So like we've only got like more. the one. I can't remember what track it was, but there was one of the songs on here where he's just mucking about that way, on the I mic, think it was, I... and he's doing an imitation mm -hmm. of Bob Dylan, Robert Smith from The Cure, Morrissey, Morrissey. <laughs> and it's just funny, right, yeah. you know, he's not, not taking it seriously mm -hmm. at all, uh, but then he'll turn around and the next track is like, wow, that's really good, brilliant mm -hmm. again, yeah. so it's like, this will be a mix, strange, right? yeah. but fun in the same, mm -hmm. same way. And then, I guess, finally, I guess we'll, we'll just show these if you want to hold one. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, if you're just looking to kind of dabble and dip your toe into getting into XTC, I think, I think these two right. albums, particularly this yeah, one that Ross is holding with just time. a singles collection, would be a great entry point, mm -hmm. starting point. Yeah. Very easy to find those. Yeah. Right. And I have had that. I only paid a measly $5 yeah. for that. Although, this you do miss out like the later stuff. Like, probably, you know, yeah. there's a better CD called uh, Fossil Fuel, which I'm not sure yes. if like, you have, but like that's that's a really good CD to get, like, double CD yep. package. But if you just want something on vinyl, that mm -hmm. would be nice. Quite and then if you really want, yeah. if you want to go even deeper and hear some of their B sides, now I would say XTC isn't not the greatest B side yeah. band ever. Some of their B sides are almost, I would classify as unlistenable <laughs> sometimes i like certainly that like, they picked out like, the best stuff like to like release like guys like singles like and like put like all like the al albums like that's why like those albums like are like, all like as good like as like, they are because they're yeah. not like putting like sort of fillery songs and then they're just like b-sides and that yeah but so, then again you know yeah. kind of like what we were just saying with this you know you they have a throwaway uh -huh. track and then, and then, then they'll follow it up with something like well that could easily be a single you yeah. know it could be on one of their major albums so exactly. Quite it's a bit of a mesh mash for that one, yeah. And we were just muck, uh, out and about yesterday shopping, mm -hmm. and I found this, and I have to say I bought it primarily for the cover because it's quite adorable, really. <laughs> this is uh, called uh, Upsy Daisy Assortment, and it's just what it sounds like. It's just an assortment of singles, kind of an odd combination of what you'd expect and a few oddities, too. Yeah. So we played this in the car yesterday really and had a good time with it. And the packaging is nice kind of what show. sold it to me on that one. So, yeah. Um, did we cover it all? I think we have done, yeah. Done all the albums, all yeah. the side projects. Wow. So I will say, you know, just to kind of summarize, that this is probably the band that I am most into right now. Mm -hmm. And the most unexpected kind of discovery, if you will, all these years later, you know, talking, what, 40 years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm that they started making music and I never was into XTC right. and then all of a sudden I've just been obsessed with it obviously with right. all this stuff and there's a great documentary as well um, yes. to watch called This Is Pop like it's like really really good re really good watch like it's probably that and probably by like English settlement but like um, like what like really got me like into them personally yeah and that This Is Pop is on Netflix in America oh so is it that's yes. not on in the UK yes right. so you can catch that yeah. on Netflix if you have um, it, it live in the States mm -hmm. and gosh I think we 
did all the all the things we wanted to do yeah. here. So it, it is awesome to have Ross here. Uh, he's here for another week, and we're going to be spending time exploring other music and trying to get him into a few things that he's kind of <laughs> said no, I'm not interested. And uh, he's always reminding me how great uh, classic rock is, and he's bought some Kinks records he's mm -hmm. taken home, and um, I'm sure he'll have an amazing uh, vinyl update vinyl here update before too long. Yes, uh -huh. uh, if anybody's watching this and not subscribed to Ross's channel, Please do so. We'll leave a link in the description to Ross's channel. Um, great videos, great music reviewer, very knowledgeable, um, and I, like I said, he's got amazing retention. I, uh, I'm, I'm hearing lyrics to the to the right of me driving all the time, <laughs> and it's like, man, you know the words of every song. <laughs> it's like I don't know how you do it. So I think it's the young mind versus the old mind here. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Ross, for being here. Yeah, and nice. until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.